What's up, YouTube? Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com, and today is a big day. Today, Google dropped the Android P Developer Preview 1, and a lot of people have already made some great videos about it, including Tim Schofield and Droid Life. I'll drop their videos below, but I want to make a video talking about the features that I love and hate about Android P Developer Preview 1. Now, I've already flashed it here on my Pixel 2 XL, and so I've got my Pixel 2 just along still has Android 8.1 on it to do some comparisons. Let's jump right into it. As usual, I'll have a Google Keep document below. I'll link it if you guys want to check out the text changes that I have here. So the first thing that's the most obvious change is the notification shade redesign along with the quick tiles and the quick settings and everything like that. If you take a look at the drop down, you can see that the notifications are more rounded than they were on Android Oreo. In fact, just for a quick comparison, like I said, you guys can see the difference between the notifications on the left, which are Android P, and the ones on the right, which are Android Oreo. Just a little more rounded, a little bit different. You've got a little faint line that's separating them. It's a little bit different than it was on Oreo as well. So that's definitely something new. Another thing that you'll notice in certain apps is that you can actually have inline pictures and uh, smarter smart replies. So more apps are getting these smart reply top options, including you know apps like backdrops, things like that where you can actually perform actions uh, from within the quick settings, and more and more apps are gonna receive those. Now, a lot of people were talking about the inline pictures that you can actually view. For instance, you can see I have a picture waiting in Hangouts. Those don't actually show up inline on Hangouts, but they do in Android Messages. I'm not really sure why they're not ready for Hangouts yet, but obviously that's something that could come in the beta and in the future developer previews as we sort of move through. But not a huge change, but definitely something different. So you guys can see also the new animations. We'll talk a little more about those in a bit. So if you actually scroll down, you'll see a pretty substantial change to the uh, quick settings and uh, the tiles up there at the top. Obviously, I've got the dark mode because I've got a dark wallpaper there, but you can definitely see there's some changes. You got these little circular icons actually showing you what's being displayed there. As you can see, I've got the Android P Boat Beta program. Uh, you can see that it's also got my Wi-Fi there. There's also a little Wi-Fi indicator showing the up and down arrows, as you guys can see right there in the notification shade. Um, another thing that you can see here is that you also have um, no more expandable tiles at the bottom, so you can't actually expand your quick settings. A lot of people are gonna hate that. You can see on Android Oreo, you've got these little arrows here where you can actually expand the quick settings below. And a lot of people use that for things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's now completely gone in Android P. So that's definitely something that I don't like. Uh, also, the settings are now not paginated anymore. They're actually vertical scrolling. So that's another change that people may or may not like. Obviously, it's a visual thing, you know, but it is certainly something that you're going to have to see if you like the overall aesthetic. There's not really too many functional things aside from those quick settings being gone, and I'm definitely going to miss those when it comes to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi settings. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it for the notification shade. Quite a few things there with the new design. Uh, the next thing is the notch screens are taking over Android. Uh, I talked about this in my first video of uh, talking about Android P. Now, when we actually get the developer preview, we see up here at the top that your little notification icons, they stop halfway through and you get a little ellipses right there, dot, dot, dot. You can see if I actually expand my notifications, I've got several other notifications there which I can't see the icons for. That's because Google is now stopping those notifications midway through to accommodate the notch displays because of course if you have a notch, it would be right there in the center. Now that kind of makes me angry because I'm not a huge fan of the notch and I want to see all of my icons all the way across the status bar because I often have a lot of notifications and that's just a change that I don't personally like. You might like it and obviously I guess it's necessary for the notch displays. The other thing is you can see the time has now moved to the left side of your uh, status bar up here. I don't know if that was really a necessary change for the notch. It's more of an aesthetic thing. Uh, the next thing is the redesigned and more colorful settings menu. So if we go into the settings menu, you'll notice that it's got a lot of color here, um, not the gray white tones that you saw in Android Oreo. Again, if I bring up my Pixel 2 here, you guys can see a nice little comparison between the two. A lot more color, all of the uh, main settings options are colored in Android P. Now, a lot of people are criticizing this, saying that uh, Google is sort of stealing a play from Samsung's book, because if you look at the settings on the Galaxy S9, for instance, or the Galaxy S8, you'll notice that a lot of them are colorful as well. Obviously, it's an aesthetic change. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of it, mainly because 
I like the clean look of the uh, settings on Android 8.1 and, and on Oreo. But, you know, it's not a change that's really going to change how you use the phone. It's just something that does make it look more like a Samsung phone with the Samsung experience. Uh, there's also some new animations as well. So let me show you guys those really quick. If I go into system and try to do a system update, for instance, watch how the uh, animation slides in the system update from the side. You guys see that right there, how it just slides it in there. A really nice, cool sliding animation. There's quite a lot of these animations now in Android P. Another really cool thing in terms of animations and haptic feedback is when you actually bring the uh, menu down, the notification shade, it actually gives you a little bit of haptic feedback, a little bit of vibration, which obviously I can't show on video, uh, but that's obviously something to note. If you actually use it yourself, you'll definitely feel that. Uh, the next thing is the volume slider. It's been moved to the side, so when you actually take your volume slider and you press the volume, you'll see that the volume slider is now on the side, not on the top anymore. So if you change your volume, you're going to see it right there. There's a couple of interesting things to note. When you change the volume, you can see that the media volume is now the default volume that you're going to change. Not the ringer, which was the previous default on Android Oreo and before, but the actual media volume that you're outputting like music, YouTube, etc. You'll also notice that right below here, there's a little toggle for your calls. So you can turn calls on vibrate, mute, uh, or ring, which I really like. And then at the top here in the volume slider, you'll notice these little arrows. This is a media output control, so you can actually control the media output, for instance, your car, your headphones, your other headphones. I got a whole bunch of different headphones. You can actually control that right within the volume slider. So I kind of like this one. This is a kind of a functional upgrade to the volume slider. Puts it in a better location and makes it a little bit easier to do some things that you're going to want to do pretty often. Uh, the next thing is auto-rotate. It works now even if you disable auto-rotate in the settings menu. So if you go up here to the settings menu, you can see I don't have auto-rotate turned on. You'll notice if I turn the uh, screen here that I have a little button down here in the nav bar. I can press that and then it'll go ahead and rotate it for me into landscape mode even though I have auto-rotate disabled. When I rotate that back to portrait, the button is there again. I can go ahead and press it and I'll take it back to portrait mode. So this is definitely a nice little touch. It's a functional thing that you might want to use if you don't want to have auto rotate on all the time, but you might want to use it in certain apps. I can definitely envision that being a small change that I'll end up using quite a bit in Android P. Uh, the next thing is going to be a big one for all of you ambient display users out there. It now shows the battery percentage on the ambient display lock screen. So if I go ahead and power it off, I have my ambient display on all the time. Right here at the bottom, you guys can see it does display my battery percentage right there. Also, if you get incoming messages, the incoming messages are now centered right in the screen. So your notifications are centered and you have your battery percentage right on the ambient display. Both of those are definitely welcome changes. Again, small things that are very functional. Pattern unlock. So I use pattern unlock as my backup. Obviously, I use the fingerprint sensor the majority of the time, but you do need to set a pen or a pattern. If you're going to use your pattern, you can go ahead and swipe up. And then as you enter your pattern, the pattern actually fades away. So you can see here, as I enter my pattern, it actually erases the trail, um, which is kind of a nice thing if you have someone looking over your shoulder and you don't want them to know your pattern. If it's really complicated, they won't be able to keep up with it because that trail sort of gets erased. It's a little bit harder to identify the pattern. Again, a very small thing, but a functional thing that definitely adds to the security of your device. The next thing is text zoom scrolling tool. So if you go into something like Chrome and go into the address bar and you actually get your cursor here, you can actually scroll through and it now zooms in on the text. This is very similar to something like iOS where you just you know press the cursor and it zooms right in. This is definitely nice if you're using an app where you need to see some text more clearly so that you can edit it or something like that. It's definitely a nice little functional feature. Again, not something that's going to change the, overway, the overall way that you use the OS in a profound way, but it's definitely something that's nice to have. The next thing is the markup screenshot editor. If you take a screenshot in Android P by pressing the power button and volume down, you'll notice that now once the screenshot is saved, you'll see the edit option. And if you actually tap on that, one of the apps that it recommends is markup. So if you tap on markup, this will allow you to doodle on your screenshot, you know, do whatever you want, make some doodles on here, and then save the markup 
and then actually export that, you know, and save it to your camera roll or share it, you know, wherever you want on Twitter or whatever. This is kind of a nice tool if you're someone like me who has to take screenshots, for instance, for writing articles and things like that. You can make some annotations to your screenshot and then share them to social media or save them for use later if you need to insert them into some work that you're doing. And that's pretty much it for the functional changes. The last thing I want to show you guys is the Android P Easter egg. I know a lot of people have shown it, but it's kind of a cool thing. Easter egg right here. You can actually zoom in on the P, which is kind of trippy, kind of interesting. And also if you back out of here and then you tap on the P again, you'll get a different color for the Android P Easter egg, which is kind of a nice thing. Uh, it's not as cool as the Flappy Bird or anything like that, but it's definitely something that Google put in there for us to check out. So anyway, those are overview of the features that I love and hate about uh, Android P. Definitely not feeling all of this preferential treatment for notch displays, but a lot of the other stuff is really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification icon so I can make future videos like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com. Google Plus, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. You can also find me writing over at gadgethacks.com. I really appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.